everyone, this is Cherry Enchantress, and this is your daily dust for August what's the day? 26, Saturday, if you're watching in real time, but it can also be from whenever you stumble upon this reading. It is also a timeless reading, and I have been in a little series for the end of August using pastel decks, so I'm on a pastel journey. This one is a little bit bright, but it's still considered a pastel deck, and it's the Alchemy, Alchemy Tarot. It's so beautiful, so bright, with such vibrant, pretty drawings. The edges, I colored myself in kind of gold, so it looks really pretty. And yeah, it's got sparkles through the whole thing but like this really vibrant pastel almost I almost jewel tone but I think it still qualifies as pastel all right so <laughs> let's get a three card collective message I'm gonna shuffle and then pick from the middle Ooh, pretty. We have this is the Empress. Oh no, the Three of Pentacles. Okay, I see the Pentacles now. <laughs> I was like, it looks like the Three of Pentacles. Okay, good. That's um, that's good. You're like showing your masterpiece to someone. And we have the Two of Swords. And then the Seven of wands which keeps coming out there's there's a defensive energy here let's zoom on in the guidebook that goes with this is all in japanese so there's no real way i can uh, follow that and let you know what the author says about each one but it is very reminiscent of the rider waite smith so but what i like really most of all is all the sparkles that go through it's like the it's like the dust, it's the pixie dust. So it's, no matter what situation you're in, there's a bit of magic that's helping you along that gets you through these different phases and stages. The three of pentacles or three of coins represents your artistry and being able to collaborate with other people or show your work to other people. So it's a combination of both maybe. Um, it's it's multiple people coming together like having a corporation or a small business where there's more than one person involved in 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 the work it could be like your big boss and you have um, people underneath you it could also sort of represent maybe your mentor energy to other people um and, but in you know you're all equal and working together yet maybe you have a bit more knowledge and you're helping the other people out it could represent lots of things like that the two of swords represents being in your mind and if you are in your mind too much then <sighs> this is very interesting okay this applies to a sort of personal situation but in if you're in your mind too much you might vacillate back and forth back and forth and have trouble making decisions but mo mostly what I notice in the two swords cards are the eyes so sometimes it's a blindfold sometimes it's eyes closed sometimes it's it's a look of maybe not distress but sort of the a kind of an unpleasant look on the face and other times it's a peaceful look on the face so whenever i see a peaceful look on the on the person's face i feel that there's balance here it looks very balanced it looks like seeing po both sides both points of view to something seeing both sides of a situation being very able to see multiple sides and not just being able to see multiple points of view mentally, but spiritually reaching out past the physical signs and tapping into intuition, into this higher energy, like getting downloads from spirit and, and also just trusting, trusting your own intuition beyond what you can see. 
because his eyes are closed, so he has to reach out with his other senses, and one of them is his sixth sense. <laughs> and then you have the seven of wands. So it could be that not everybody gets you or understands how you come to certain conclusions, like I have a gut feeling about this, or I just know, I just, I don't know how to explain it, but I just know. And you're like often having to explain to people who don't really understand what you're talking about and so there's a bit of defensiveness but I I see sometimes the defensiveness can come from other people as well like you're trying to explain something to somebody and then they take issue with it right away they they perceive what you're saying in a certain way that may not necessarily be the way that the person intended for it to sound and then you react to that maybe uh, I'm only saying this from experience and I had a situation even this morning with somebody <laughs> in my family and they said something and I took it personally in a hurtful way and I was crying and then my higher self said try to see this more objectively Try to see it from his point of view, what he's try, how he's trying to express it. And then a light clicked onto my head. I'm like, oh, now I get it. It's kind of like something else that he explained to me. So I'm, I'm looking at it in context of how he explains things, how he's, he's brought about other information. And even though that's not always the best way to do it, it's, it's a little bit better than interpreting it in your way of an, like if you had said this that's what you would have meant well that's not necessarily what he meant means you know <laughs> the way he said it he meant this and you it's almost like something needs to translate it's almost like English and Spanish or something like when and it's really true like languages and this could actually be about languages you know but sometimes you know when we say certain a certain sentence in English and it's translated in Spanish it when you translate it in Spanish the the way it's written doesn't even sometimes look like the original English sentence it's it's like no that's not what I mean and and then vice versa you say something in Spanish and then you translate it in English and it breaks it down in such a weird way but it's like there's a nuance and a different there's sort of this other underlying layer to this the actual meaning of this sentence that that the English translation didn't actually provide and I'm just using English and Spanish but all language that I think all languages have that new nuance and so when you're in a conversation with somebody, just remember, wherever you are in the conversation, whether you're the, the one giving or receiving information, if you feel defensive or if they're the ones feeling defensive, just try to look big picture at, at uh, yeah, just big picture, just kind of like zoom out a bit, you know, and see maybe it's not quite the interpretation is slightly different than what you thought gosh especially during mercury retrograde because mercury retrograde is all about making a c a b and c and no i should say not a a is what's typical for us the first plan the first thought the first energy the the habit, the traditional, the things that we're always doing, we're always used to. Mercury retrograde is about the B, C, and D. <laughs> it's about all these other possibilities, all these other ways, all these other avenues, sometimes visiting shadow sides, sometimes just it, it feels very hanged man energy, like taking a different point of view. Sometimes, it, and a lot of times, it's reflecting and reviewing. And just basically keeping open-minded that's all you got to do on the day like today stay kind of take a higher point of view and stay open-minded and then see what happens <laughs> but really other than that and to be honest you're very talented you have wonderful gifts you work really well with others you're, you're very kind and gracious about seeing multiple point of views 
And, you know, even in that aspect, if somebody accuses you of not seeing multiple point of views or being not understanding, you have every right to defend yourself with that, you know, like, excuse me, but I am very open-minded and I see multiple points of view. I feel like you're projecting your energy. Sometimes it can be that. Somebody who's projecting something that but it's understandable to be ne to be defensive but it's it's not necessarily necessary to be defensive right because then that kind of creates this loop where you're not actually hearing maybe what they're saying maybe they're using the wrong words to express something maybe they weren't meant meaning to to target you or isolate you or to pinpoint things on you maybe they were just trying to get a certain point of, or a topic or an idea across and and you know how we are we all are so different we all our languages are so different not just our English is different but it you know not like we not not just that our our cultural languages are different that I just in in English and just the way we we're raised and everything that goes with us it, you know, and all the, the ways that we've expressed ourselves over the years, that's all a part of us. And not everybody has that same way of expressing. <laughs> so be just, I think, I mean, you do what you need to do, but I feel like it's one of those days where you just have to get a um, more perspective on the situation. But otherwise, everything is going really well. You know, and if you need to defend yourself, defend yourself. You know what? You deserve to. But if if you see higher picture, it's not really helping the situation. Then kind of fly above the situation. You don't have to engage with the sticks. You can fly above it. You don't have to run away from it either. Obviously, you know, it doesn't have to be a fight or flight situation either. You can stay right where you are and rise above. All right. <laughs> so I hope you like that. Faith just and pixie dust. Mm -hmm.